Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Will, and we are delighted to have you here as we worship God together today. Uh, just a few announcements as we begin, and just a word of praise. Wow, thank you for the, the beautiful weather, Lord. We are, appreciate that in the, here in the middle of, of August. Uh, just a word of, of praise and thanks to God, uh, Madison and Cody Shores, uh, who usually sit right there, have welcomed a new baby boy into the world, Ander James Shores, and so we uh, congratulate their, their family uh, on that, and we'll certainly welcome little Ander James when he, when he arrives on, uh, for his first Sunday, but congratulate that family. There's an administrative council meeting tonight at 7 p.m. in Langford Hall, and the Early Learning Center Committee We'll meet on Tuesday at, at uh, August 16th at 6.30. Uh, you can see the other announcements there. The United Women in Faith uh, have their celebration calendar uh, available. If you'd like to purchase those, uh, you can see uh, Eunice Holt or uh, Anita Watson. Uh, we're glad to get you a, a calendar for that. Uh, the youth are going to be going to Elevate Wake Park, which I've checked out, and that's going to be really fun, really cool. Um, on August 28th from 2 to 4, so see Mac or Sarah, or you can talk to me about that. We'd love to get some more of our youth uh, involved, kind of a kickoff to our, our regular youth meetings. And the young adults, uh, the breakaways, are going to be uh, gathering for their normal meeting starting on August 23rd. Also, next Sunday, they're going to be serving breakfast uh, before the early service and during Sunday school, uh, sausage biscuits and uh, things to, to raise money for the Victory Junction Gang. So. Uh, don't eat breakfast next Sunday and uh, before Sunday school, and, and you can have a, have a biscuit. Are there any other announcements to bring before our church family today? Yes. All right, so they just had your 60 sec 62 wedding anniversary, and Tommy's 82nd, 87th birthday today. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. Uh, I meant to mention that our, our custodian, uh, David Tilley, uh, he celebrated a birthday last week. It was his 80th, so make sure to tell David uh, happy birthday. And Sarah King, our youth pastor, uh, she had a birthday yesterday, so if you see her, wish her a happy birthday as well. Any others uh, to, to bring before the church family? Oh, your birth? All right. Happy birthday to you. Absolutely. And Talisa, good to have you back with us. Glad you're, glad you're here too. All right. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Father, it's so good to be in your house. And we come now to center our hearts and minds on you. We pray that your Holy Spirit may fall fresh on us this morning, that we may come to know you better. Uh, Lord, we worship you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand for our, our opening hymn. It's God of creation, all powerful. I think you'll recognize the tune though. Let's, let's stand together.
Amen. I like the way they put the, uh, the words to be thou my, the tune to be, be thou my vision. Would you join me in our historic affirmation of our faith, the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite our ushers forward for the morning offering. Let us pray. God, we come now to return a tithe and an offering to you. We pray that you bless these gifts, multiply them, and bless the giver in Jesus' name. You may be seated, and I want to invite our children forward for children's time. Mm -hmm. 
How's everybody doing? Having a first good week of uh, good week of first of school. A lot of you started school this week. Yeah, some of you probably start preschool before long. Uh, glad it's going good. So what am I? Uh, what is this? A guitar. Yeah. Yeah. How many strings are on my guitar? Can you count them? One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Six strings on the guitar. And, uh-oh, Pastor Will forgot to tune it up. You know what? If all the strings are not tuned up, it doesn't sound right. Let's see. Uh-oh, that one's out of tune. Oh. And here's the thing. There's six strings on this guitar, but if just one of them is out of tune, it just doesn't sound right. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but who wants to sing a song? You want to sing a song? Anybody? Let's sing a song. How about uh, this little light of mine? Y'all have to help me with the motions because I've got two hands occupied here. Here we go. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let's do one more. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hey, that was pretty good, right? All right, so I've got this guitar, and there's six strings, and if just one of those strings is out of tune, it messes it all up. But here's the thing. God has created everything that is. You know, he's created us. He's created the world. He's created the, uh, the universe, and it's all really finely tuned. Like, it's all, like, exactly in tune. Not just one out of the six strings, you know, if, if one out of the six trillion strings that God has created was out of tune, you know, earth and, and life and this planet as we know it would, would be different. Uh, we may not even exist, but God has finely tuned all of us, and he's finely tuned our world. And, and that's pretty neat, right? That God looks at all the universe and all he's made, and he says, you know what, all that's good, but you guys, us, kids, moms, dads, grandparents, he says, y'all are very good, not just good, but you're, you're very good, that's pretty neat, isn't it? It's pretty neat that our universe that's so finely tuned, I think it demands a fine tuner, and, and that's God, y'all remember that? He's a fine tuner, and he's fine tuning us too, he's kind of tuning us, getting us into into, uh, into harmony with, with his plan and what he wants to do with our life. Okay, so God's the, the great fine tuner. Y'all want to sing one more song? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Very good. Awesome. Can we pray together? God, we're thankful that you do love us, uh, Lord, that you said that we're not just good, we are we're very good. I'm thankful for all these children that you continue to, to tune into perfect harmony with your will and your way. Lord, we're thankful that you are God of the universe. You are the, the master tuner of all, and you've tuned it all so perfectly. We're thankful for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys can go to Children's Church with a different Miss Sarah today. <laughs> uh, Sarah joins us on vacation. Parents, they'll, uh, they'll bring them back in for our last hymn. As we come to our prayer time this morning, I invite you to take a look at your bulletin and the, the prayer concerns in your, your bulletin. 
certainly keep uh, Jim Burgess in your prayers. Jim had some surgery on, on Friday, but is, is doing okay and recovering from that. Um, also, Bruce Bergdorf, who is a, a new member of our, our church, is currently in the hospital uh, and needs our, needs our prayers. Are there, uh, I heard Joyce Steele had a fall, uh, too, this week, so keep Joyce Steele in your prayers. Are there any prayers or other prayers or praises to bring for our, for our, uh, before our church family? Yes, Ricky. Anita and I have a friend, Judy Coleman. Her husband passed away this week, and all of the family had got caught COVID at the hospital except for four of them. Oh, goodness. So they're having a rough time, and they're back here. All right. Prayers for the, the Coleman family. Almond. Oh, excuse me. Almond. All right. Is there another one back here? Yes. Uh, no. Betty McNeely passed away Thursday. So. All right. The Betty McNeely family. family. Yes, sir. Worley King. King. All right. Praise for Worley. Steve. 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 Yes, Steve. Uh, we'll keep uh, Jay's son Steve in your prayers. Yes, ma'am. Oh, goodness. Jerry Holt. Terry Holt. Okay. Wanda? Patty Williams. Vicki Young is having surgery this week. Any others? Yes. Uh, Xavier's having some uh, outpatient surgery this week, so yeah. Prayers for him. Any others? The family of Phil Christie? Bill, Bill Christie. Okay. Any others? All right. A lot of needs among our, our church family this morning, but God certainly hears those and and knows those needs, and, and we'll do something about it. Let's bow in prayer together. Lord, again, we are just grateful and, and humbled and privileged to gather together as your people. Uh, Lord, what a, what a blessing it is just to, to be in your house, Lord, to, to worship you, to set this time apart to, for you. God, we are, we are so blessed, and we have so much to thank you for. God, you're uh, just so good, and your goodness is beyond our, our comprehension. Uh, you're, you're worthy of our, of our praise this morning. You're worthy of our worship. Uh, but Lord, we come bringing you all of our, our troubles. Uh, we come bringing you our problems and perplexities and sicknesses and, and hurts. Lord, knowing that you're able to do so much more than we could ever ask or think, but we'll become leaning on you and depending on you. Lord, we're thankful for your presence in our life, even when we're unaware. Lord, we give you thanks this day. We acknowledge you and, and we worship you with all our hearts. We invite you to look inside of our, our hearts and minds and Lord, we seek forgiveness for our sins, for times that we've failed. And we're thankful for your, your grace and mercy and your forgiveness. We're thankful for Jesus who has paid the price for our sins. Lord, I pray that you would continue to mold each one of us, that Lord, that you would Continue to be the, the fine tuner in each one of our lives, molding us into the kind of disciples, into the kind of Christians you'd have us to be. Lord, making you a priority, seeking you first in your kingdom and your righteousness. We pray for our church today, Lord, that you might strengthen us and bind us together, Lord, that we might reach out into our community, into this world for your sake. Lord, strengthen us. Make us as strong as ever to show your love to those around us. Lord, I know that you put this church here many years ago to be about your work. And so, Lord, help us to continue to do that, to be sensitive to your leadership and the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We pray for our, our country and for our leaders, for all those that put themselves in harm's way for our protection. Lord, may you watch over them. Lord, that you would heal our land. And Lord, I pray for the message that you've given me this week, Lord, that it might be effective and accomplish your purpose this day. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank God for science. Uh, we're in this sermon series, and we are here for week two, and I'm excited that you are here. Uh, we've been asking the question, what would it look like if physics and faith weren't enemies, but in fact friends? And they are. They are. Last week, you may remember, we began with a, a sermon about the wrong question. How we've been asking the, the wrong question. We've been looking at the, the creation in Genesis 1, and we've been treating like it like it's something that it's, it's not. We've been treating it like a, a science textbook or like a, a journalist notebook, and we've been asking the wrong questions. We've been saying, uh, tell me how and, and when. Tell me how and when. But Genesis chapter 1 is telling us who and why. And the who is our Lord God Almighty who created all that is. He didn't battle creation into existence, but simply spoke, and it was so. And the why of the creation was for you and for me, that he created us, that he went to extreme lengths to give us his infinite touch. You are not uh, just tolerated in this world. Church, he says, you're good. You're very good. You're not just tolerated. You are treasured in this world. You're the pinnacle of God's creation. You're at the forefront of God's plan for the future and for eternity. You are loved. In Genesis chapter 1, I think it's the goat, as we talked about last week, the greatest of all time at letting us know that. So don't waste any time trying to defend Genesis 1 as a science textbook or as a journalist notebook. Don't ask the wrong question. Don't ask how and when. Know that it's telling us who and why. Today we're making a, a turn in our sermon series with a, a sermon called Do the Math. We have any uh, folks that are good at math or like math here today, anybody? Okay, I, I thought we might have a few uh, math teachers or accountants in the congregation, but, but do the math. And we're going to be talking about how this world, this universe is all so infinitely uh, and intricately put together. And the odds of all that just happening are so outrageous. So do the math. Do the math. There is a an intelligent designer behind the, the, behind the design. So if you have your Bibles today, uh, we're going to be in Job. We're going to be at the end of Job, Job chapter 37 and, and 38. And, and just uh, some reminders for you. Maybe you're new here and haven't heard this before, but, but this what I hold in my hand here. It may look like a book, but it's not a book. <laughs> it's a library of many different books and many different writings, di many different authors, many different styles of writing, which was very important for where we went last week, but we believe that this library is unlike any other on earth, that God breathed his life and his truth onto its pages, and it's inspired, it's eternal, and it's true, and so we get excited about scripture, and we're excited for God to, to pour out his, his wisdom on us as we dive into his word. Another thing we get excited about is, is prayer. Uh, we believe that nothing happens without prayer, and so I invite you to take a moment and just pray with me this morning. And as you pray with me, don't forget to pray for me. Let's pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So you see, I've brought my guitar with me uh, this morning. I'm not a very good guitar player. I, I tend to stick to the, to the piano, but I, I do like the guitar, and I'm thankful for um, some folks that taught me to play many years ago. Um, but there is, and I talked about it in our, in our children's sermon, um, there's just something about a guitar. It needs to be in tune to, to sound right. Uh, so I, I think I've got it tuned back up, but I'm going to play a little, uh, little riff here, uh, one of my famous, uh, one of the guitar riffs that I like the most, and, and you try to name that tune, okay? Name that tune. Here we go. We'll get down here where you can hear me. Clapton, somebody's already named it. Wonderful tonight, right? Now that song's pretty, pretty special uh, to me and, and my wife. Uh, you see, the very first week of uh, of college, we had freshman uh, karaoke night in the freshman dorm. I sang that, and I, and I I think that that helped me out. You know, 
I, I didn't have a whole lot going for me, but, you know, I, I sang that, and, and that gave me some odds. I, you know, I kind of bumped on up the, the, the chart there. Uh, so, so I give that song credit for, for helping uh, me um, way uh, out cover my, I forget how you say that, but anyway, uh, married up. I married up. Um, so so I, I, uh, I, I played that song um, and sang that song on karaoke night. And, uh, and so we, we sang that at our wedding. Uh, that was the, the first song we danced to. And we realized, oh, that's a beautiful song. That's a long song, too. Uh, and we really realized that as we were sitting there dancing and everybody looking at us. Well, wow, this song goes on forever. And it does. Um, but wonderful tonight, uh, that, that guitar. Um, but here's the thing. If just one string was out of tune, it would not sound right. Oh, it just, this, this one little touch of the, of the peg here, and, and it completely ruins, ruins the song. And what I'm telling you is pretty much the same thing I told the kids. You know, God in, in his infinite creation has designed all of this. And our, our world is so intricately put together and so uh, balanced and so in tuned. And, and God has put in tune not just six strings, but six trillion, trillion strings. And they're all in, in perfect harmony. And if just one of them were out of balance, life as we know it wouldn't exist here uh, on, on this planet. And so, so do the math. You know, this didn't happen by coincidence. You were, you're not an accident. I'm not an accident. Uh, this just didn't happen uh, by, by coincidence. There was a, a master designer. There was a, a fine tuner behind our finely tuned universe. Do the math. Do the math. So we've been talking about science. And, uh, and I have a, a science experiment for you. This morning, maybe you thought in school, you know, that was the funnest part of science, right? Do, getting to do the experience. I've got a really cool one for you. Ready for this? This is going to be awesome. All right, let's, let's make a hypothesis. What's going to happen when I drop this pin? <laughs> it's going to fall, right? Wow, you're right. What, now, wasn't that a cool science experiment? Huh? <laughs> Not really. The, kid, the kids would be like, oh, come on. Um, but it's true. The fact that gravity always works. And that gravity works the way that it, that it works. I mean, think about it. If gravity were a little bit stronger here and a little bit weaker here, the world as we know it would not exist. But because of things like gravity, because the earth is so finely tuned, that's what makes life possible on this planet. What about this picture here? <laughs> What's that? That's the radar gun, right? I mean, how many of you have fallen victim to that thing? Okay, and, and just a public service announcement. They've been out here in front of the church. You know, it goes from 55 on 152 to 45, 35. I know they, I've talked to Andrew. They, over the last month, they've given like 60 tickets right out here. So do not speed in front of the church. They are cracking down out here. Uh, maybe you've fallen victim to, uh, to one of these things. And the radar detector, the way it works, the technology it uses is called Doppler technology. Uh, where it sends out a sound wave and it bounces back and they're able to measure distance and things. The same technology they use in the weather. You've heard of Doppler uh, radar. You know, they send it. But that same technology on a very grand scale uh, is what scientists use to measure our universe. And they were able to see just how big our universe is. And they're able to determine that our universe continues to grow. And they're able to use this technology, this Doppler technology to kind of go backwards and say that there was a, a moment of singularity, a moment of singularity where there was matter and antimatter, there were gases and material and protein and all of that, and it was so condensely packed into this dense particle, and there was a moment of singularity where it all exploded into existence at the same time. And the universe has stopped, never stopped growing since. And the same technology that tells you you're going 47 and 35 has told us that. It measures the fact that the universe continues to grow and expands. There was an astrophysicist by the name of Paul Davies. And he says that the odds of all that material exploding and expanding in such a way that we have life as we have it on planet Earth today. The odds of that, he did the math behind it are 1 and 10 followed by 
a thousand billion zeros. <laughs> That's a big, long number. Those are not good odds. Don't take that to Vegas, okay? Do the math. Do the math. The world that we live in is so incredibly calibrated and so incredibly fine-tuned. And that's where we find God speaking to, to Job. And I know what you're thinking, Pastor Will, why are we in Job? Job is about suffering and patience. And I thought we were thanking God for science, not for suffering. But you'll get to it. Uh, and you'll see why I'm, I'm bringing up Job. Because uh, Job deals with a lot of things in life. He deals with a lot of suffering, yes. But he really, uh, God gets to him towards the end of, of the book. Job and his friends have been railing against God, uh, and, and God finally answers him back. And we know that, that Job, just like a lot of books in Scripture, it was written to be heard. Uh, it was written to the, the ancient mind, m many of whom could not read. And so it was written to be heard. It was written to people and had an original audience. Like I said last week, we were not the original audience of Genesis. We were not the original audience of, of Job. And so it was written with people with, a, with an ancient mind who hadn't discovered all this stuff about science and the expanding universe and all that, the theory of relativity and all that. It was written to people uh, without our kind of modern mindset. When you understand how the ancient mind worked and you hear these words that that Job speaks so, uh, that God speaks to Job so incredibly, you'll see that it is in tune with where we are going. And one other thing about Job before we really dive in, everybody says, well, well, you have the patience of Job. You've said that before. Well, the book of Job is not necessarily about the patience of Job. It's about the patience of God. How God is patient with Job because chapter after chapter, speech after speech, page after page of of Job and his friends just railing against God, not, not cursing, but shaking a, a heavy fist to God. Why, God? Why, God? Why have you done this? Why have you taken these things from me? And then finally, Job gives his last speech and his very last question. Chapter 37, verse 4. Therefore, people revere him, that's God, for does he not regard, have regard for all the wise in heart? Therefore, people revere him, or does he not have regard for all the wise in heart? The very last question that, that Job asked God, God, people revere you, but why don't you revere us back? Why don't you honor us, wise people? Why have you taken all this stuff from me? What's up with all this God? So Job asked this one last defiant question, and it sets up the stage for, for God's answer, which we find, which we find in, in chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord spoke out of the storm. I love that. God speaking out of the storm. I kind of imagine a rumbling. God turns the tables. Verse 2. The Lord speaks, the Lord God spoke out of the storm. Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man, and I will question you, and you shall answer me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Job knows that he has done it now, you know. God tells Job, all right, you've been questioning me. Now it's my turn to question you. And you better brace yourself. You better man up. You better pull up your bootstraps because we're about to rumble. God says, it's me and you, Job. And don't, don't you know Job was just shaking in his boots. I mean, God is speaking to him in the storm. And all that sets the stage for God's answer that, that's perfectly crafted, I think perfectly delivered, especially for the, the ancient mind. Look at what God says in the first line of verse 4. He tells Job, Job, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Job, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? He's putting it into perspective for Job. Job, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? I read that this week and, and I realized, and I, I had realized it before, but this kind of caught me that you know, there once was a time when there was only God. There was a time when there was God plus nothing. Once upon a time, God. In the beginning, God plus nothing. And the reason that we are here is because God created. The reason that he is worthy of our praise is because God continues to create. God didn't create because he was lonely. He didn't create because he was incomplete. 
God created us and all the world because he is full of love. And God needed to express that love and wanted to express that love. Once there was only God. Job, once upon a time there was only me. Where were you when there was only me? Job, what are you going to say after that? I mean, what would you say after that? Well, thankfully, Job doesn't say anything. He keeps his mouth shut. Probably the smart thing to do. God continues. Tell me if you understand, Job, who marked off its dimensions. Surely you know who stretched a measuring line across it. On what were its footings set? Who laid the cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and the angels shouted for joy? Wow, I love that. All that measuring, all that tuning, all that construction imagery, all that math in a pre-math world, all that physics in a pre-physics world. And he's speaking to a people that they didn't know about all that stuff, about the theory of relativity and all that. Job, uh, he's speaking to Job in a language that he can understand, in a language that his contemporaries could, could understand. And all that tuning, all that math, all that measuring, it lets us know that on, a, on an interstellar level, it all works. God has worked it all out. And he's not tuned just six strings. He's tuned six trillion, trillion strings. And they're all playing in perfect harmony. And the reason the math works out and the reason the science works out and the physics works out is because God created all that. God invented all of that. I said it last week, but I'll say it again. There's never been a time in human history where we've discovered something as human beings that God was like, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. God already knew it. He invented it all. The reason it works is because it's his plan. He is the plan. When you understand that, that God created math and physics and science, and he is math and physics and science, and he is the fine-tuner who, in this infinitely fine-tuned universe who's created all that is and all that will ever be, and yet he is still intimately concerned about you, and he wants to know you, and he wants a relationship with you. Wow, that's some good news, right? That should just leave us in awe and wonder. Well, science has done a lot to help us understand the beginnings. Genesis 1 was a story of our beginnings that the ancient mind could understand. They didn't understand gases and explosions and all that stuff. But Genesis 1 is a story of our, our beginnings. And science, uh, with the help of God, has, has helped us understand a lot about our beginnings. All this stuff about the, you know, there was a moment of singularity where everything, uh, some people call it the Big Bang, you know, when all, it all exploded into existence and there's evidence to the point that there is a, a moment of singularity where everything exploded into existence and all of that science but it never answers one more question who lit the fuse who lit the fuse who assembled all the parts together before they banged into existence who assembled them together, the matter, the antimatter, the, the proteins, the carbons, the gases? Who assembled them together in a way so that when they exploded into existence in perfect alignment that what we have today is life? What we have is you and me. Here's what I want you to know, church. A finely tuned universe demands a fine tuner. And that is our Lord God Almighty. We live in a universe that is so finely tuned, not just six strings, but six trillion, trillion strings, so finely tuned. And God has created it all and designed it all and tuned it all. And it was no accident. It just didn't happen by coincidence. You were on purpose. You were created on purpose for a purpose. You know, the great evidence of, of God's goodness it's just, a, if you want some evidence of God's goodness, just take a moment and, and reflect on the reality of our existence, that we are here. A finely tuned universe demands a fine tuner. And, you know, I, I love the degree in which scientists and physicists and astrophysicists, they're finally coming around to this. They're finally coming around and saying, you know what? There is so much, and all this makes perfect sense. They're saying, that, you know, if you do the math... The odds are so outrageous. Astrophysicists, scientists, they're coming around 
to this. Some of the smartest worlds, uh, some smartest minds in the world who are devoted to studying the universe. They're finally coming around to this. Listen to what this astrophysicist says. His name is Robert Jastrow. He says, at this moment, it seems as though science will never be able to raise the curtain on the mystery of creation. For the scientist who's lived by the faith and by his faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He scaled the mountains of ignorance. He's about to conquer the highest peak, and he pulls himself over the final rock, and he's greeted by a band of theologians, God seekers, who've been sitting there for centuries. It turns out that the more we know, the less we understand. The more knowledge we accumulate, the more it becomes crystal clear that there is so much more that we do not know. Our universe is so uniquely fine-tuned, and it demands a fine-tuner. Just a little more gravity here, just a little bit, it's an inch closer to the sun there. We would not be here. Life as we know it wouldn't exist. A universe this finely tuned demands a fine tuner. And there's more to that. There's more than just our planet with light and power and light and darkness and and balance all intergalactically. But there's also the unlikelihood of having life that produces human life. Anthropic life. The anthropic principle. There's a word you can use at work this week. Anthropic. Human life. That the planet was designed not just for life, but for human life. Where we can have brains to think about these things. We have brains to think about where we came from and, and the origins of, our, of life. That we have brains to ask these questions and think about how unlikely all of this is. And the odds of this kind of life coming out of this kind of universe are astronomically long. So do the math. Do the math. I love how the physicist Freeman Dyson, he says, as the more I examine the universe and the details of its architecture, the more evidence I find that the universe must have known we were coming. God has gone to infinite lengths to give you his intimate touch. A finely tuned universe demands a fine tuner. He's gone to extreme lengths to make sure that you're here. Extreme lengths, such as sending his son into the world to die for your sins. When you understand that God is that fine tuner, maybe you begin to understand that he's, he continues to create. He continues to, to fine tune us. We are the ones that he is continuing to tune. How is God fine tuning you in your life? Where is he directing your path? Well, know that the, the God of our ever-expanding universe is still intimately concerned about you and your life. He looks at the, the, the oceans. He looks at the land. He looks at the mountains and the sky. He says, all that's good, but you know what? You are very good. You're the pinnacle of my creation. You're not just good. You're, you're very good. But I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying. We are all still sinners in need of a Savior. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. And that is Jesus Christ. But God is tuning us. God is tuning you, church. Sometimes when we look at his creation, I don't know about you, but just going out and taking a look at the stars or being up at the top of a mountain and looking over and just, just being in awe and wonder that the God of the universe has created all of this. And it's so finely tuned and it demands a fine tuner. That is our Lord God Almighty. Let me pray. Father, we thank you that you are the epic tuner of the universe. That you are so intimately in tune to us. Yes, you put the six trillion trillion strings into perfect harmony. But you've also gone to these infinite lengths to give you, to give us your intimate touch. Lord, we thank you and we love you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand with me. Uh, I'm going to, this may be a song that's not familiar to you. It's a, it's a contemporary Christian song that, and guess what? I'm finally, I'm going to get to play Lisa's piano. Y'all believe that? She's going to let me play her piano. Um, but I want you to listen to the words of this song. It's called, So Will I. 
so well. And it's, it's a beautiful song, but I particularly love the words to this song. You may not know it at the beginning, but, but you'll catch on. Let's stand together as we sing. There at the start, before the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so will I I can see your heart in everything you've made Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty your voice. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. Oh, and as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. The stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still fall shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. So I could find it here If 
you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart eight billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Let's go forth to, to serve him, the one who never leaves the one behind, the one who has so finely tuned our universe and who is deserving of our praise. He is the designer. He is the fine tuner. Let's go forth to praise him, to worship him, to serve him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>